Hello. Welcome. Let's set some traps, baby. Okay, so as we said in the introductory video, we're gonna try and get a tip up in about 20-ish feet of water. So here you can see we're kind of standing on shore there. And somebody has fished out here. You can see a little hump out there. That's probably quite a bit deeper. And so we're gonna we're gonna try and drill one right here and see what we got. I'm gonna guess it's hopefully in the 20s, and we'll adjust off of that. Uh, first things first. Woo! Look at that. This is a six-inch Nils hand auger, and I can't I can't uh, recommend these things enough. I've drilled a lot of hand auger holes in my day, and this is by far the best hand auger money can buy. It's a little pricey, but it's worth it. And if I were to buy another one, I'd get the eight incher. My brother has one, and I thought you know maybe it'd be tougher to drill. It's not. It's same deal. You can fold the handle down on it if you really want to pack down. We're kind of going light, so we just left her up. So uh, it's got this nice like piston action. Oh my. You can see there's not that much. Not much ice for January 5th. A little light. And the first whole top layer was like frozen snow and then we got a slush layer in there and then the real ice was I don't know, maybe eight. I'll stick my hand down there. There's really no reason to, but <laughs> we'll just usually, we'll give it a check. So like, there's the real ice. And I don't know, it's, it's, it's probably 12 inches. Yeah, all right, we got the, the arm tape measure. I made an appearance. Yeah. So that's 15 inches. And I think the ice is about there. So it's about a foot of real ice. The most practical tattoo. All right, so Eric called it radar. I love that. We got a radar out. My radar happens to be an old Bexlar base unit. This thing is all you really need. Probably bring this up a little. So you just can, uh, you know, I've, I've played the game with the little weights on there forever and So it's double shallow, uh, we're a little over 30 then. Uh, so the way it works is you're reading the outside ring on the white, because I went to shallow mode over here. So it's it's reading a hard bottom at about 15 and a half from the bottom of the transducer, so we're looking at, you know, 33 feet or so. Wow. Um, you can go to deep mode and look at it different, uh, but it's the same. Uh, depth either way. They're just the, how you're reading the dial. So, uh, yeah, it's a little deeper than I wanted But not necessarily bad. Maybe we'll throw one tip up here and then try and go inside of this just as a base That's not terrible at like 30 feet What do you think? Yeah, I, I would say throw a tip up out here and as well. That's maybe... not terrible It's a little deeper than normal, but it'll give us a good range Split the difference for a, a tip up hole. That's not too much in that fringy slush layer that's kind of right up against the edge of the shore there. We're actually not too slushy out here. I mean, it's a little slushy, but it's not. There's a there's a layer like 15 yards offshore that's pretty slushy. Yeah, it kind of sunk in pretty good even with the snowshoes on. Yeah. Yeah, you can definitely see the the frozen slush top there. That thing is still holding together for you? Yeah, I gotta give a special shout out to this uh, beautiful chippy. metal chippy scoop. Can we get a... See the whole majestic beauty of this thing. Even the little tooth up here is banged up. Yeah. I mean, I've had this thing. This thing's been with me for probably a decade easy. One or two more bends on that uh, edge right where the, the ladle starts, I would say is it's probably, probably gonna, gonna be snap pretty soon, yeah. yeah. Uh, but it's still doing a trick. Um, 
is a shout out to number 11. No, this is number 10, I'm sorry. And it's, this is probably as nine or 10 years in service now too. I number all my tip ups. This is number 10 and I've retired like one through seven so far. I'm currently like working eight through 13, I think. But these are nice, especially if we're in the pack. Can I point out this? The way you can pack them down, and I put a little cork I glue on the bottom so I can stick the hook in. But then the way they pack up against this thing, like you can hide them in your pack and almost never get something caught in there. Like I got my outside coat kind of stuffed in the top. You know, and a lot of other ones, just the way the hook sits, uh, you end up getting hooking all your crap in the pack. And I try and get everything into one pack. So anyways, I like these. These are really heavy duty. I've used them a lot and they still keep going real nice. Uh, so like I said, I put it, I put that cork on the bottom. I got a braid on there. It's a green braid. This one's a lucky green braid. And then I just took a snap swivel and then these, these rigs, I tie them up and I hang them so they stay straight. And then I just put them on right before we leave to go fishing. Otherwise you get them all coiled up and you're fishing live bait. It looks stupid. We got chubs fresh today purchased these husky jobs there they are right we grew up they call that a fat head right up here they call them a chub no they're not big but effective for lake trout and you're trying to hook them as so light as you, possible yeah you don't like blast them through the spine or the brain or the eye because you want them to keep moving so you kind of hook them like Right through the top, back, I guess would be the uh, yeah, the official... Uh, you can hook them in the lip too, but some people like that. I'll do that sometimes for jigging, but for tip-ups, I almost always hook them right in the back like that. All right, so we're gonna dro drop it in there now. And I just took it down a little bit and then got the radar back in. And you can see our bait down there. And I, because of the rigs I use are kind of heavy, uh, that helps us to see it on the radar too. So it's a 25 pound braid and then this is like a 20 pound fluorocarbon leader. Probably heavier than needed and they may deter a few fish from even biting it but at least I know if we get one hooked on this it's going to be caught more times than not. I'd rather go heavy duty plus I could just interchange these for like pike fishing or whatever I, they're a good all-around rig and then uh you set it and you can see uh we'll turn up the sensitivity here so that's us there we're just off the bottom i'm going to start off the bottom and then we can always adjust and pull up uh try middle of the column later but you have to remember too it's 31 feet or so down there but like 10 feet that way it's like 50 feet and 10 feet that way it's like 15 feet so yeah i kind of like being right on the bottom to start at least Sometimes you'll catch them right under the ice though. So you gotta be flexible. And uh, importantly, we're gonna set this thing. Uh, you're setting on the spindle here and you wanna be, the wind's kinda coming through like this. And always set it facing the wind. Uh, and then make sure this is kinda level and then this is tightened up properly. And there's, a, there's two different little notches on that. If you wanna go like super sensitive, you can turn it over to that opposite side. But with but the wind, with this wind, yeah, you definitely want to have nice. it in that pretty hard notch. And it's lake trout fishing, which is generally like pretty much like yes or no. It's not like a little suckling walleye. They're gonna hit it, so you don't necessarily need to be like super finesse with it. Yeah, so I mean, putting it in that big groove, the, 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 the deeper notch, as it were, is the way to go. All right. Well, that's a good start, and we're going to just move in a little bit and pop one and see where we can get one around 20. I kind of want to shake it like just under 20, maybe. Ooh, that wind is picking up now. Woo!
<laughs> well, I'm gonna tip this one up then. Okay, this is number 11. It needs some marking. It's a little, uh, looking a little shabby. Um, you can see the spring on this thing's been <laughs> it's bent abused a little to the side. This thing's got some fish, I'll tell you. So this one's got a little more bells and whistles. That last rig was pretty standard. Uh, oh, the, the bait's over there. get two lines per person and generally I will get the tip ups in first and just let them at least be fishing while we kind of figure out what we're doing. So this one's like 22 we're at like 33 there so that's perfect. Uh, I like to use like a number eight treble just a plain treble. This one's got some Real uh, whistles. Two blades. Okay, and so the one in 33 is pretty close to the bottom, but I'm gonna leave this one up just a little. And then again, Set it and face it to the wind. So yeah, we're, uh, this one's about 14 down in 22. Wind advisory. Yeesh. folks jigging has commenced get that cleared up all right so you can see we're in uh it's reading about 13 and uh shallow one with a real hard bottom this is all rock out here uh let me tell you a little bit about my jigging rod <laughs> uh yeah this thing's a real uh fancy rig it's being held together with duct tape i'm using braided line like I said, I don't really fish deep, don't need it. Uh, so braided lights basically set up like a tip up but I can reel it up real quick. I got my uh, favorite little Swedish pimple. That's a small one with a chartreuse sticker and a red tag. This has uh, been with me a long time and I'm on slightly lighter line here. This is more like a 12 pound fluoro leader. So yeah, I'm gonna tip this with one of the chubs as well uh, through the bottom lip and kind of work them. And yeah, I'm in 13, 14 here. Uh, tip up one is in like 22. And then tip up two is out there in the deep, so like 33. So we're in a real nice uh, inside crescent. Uh, we're gonna slam them, I think. I love how many different ways we've described the like shallow, it's like a like a bent horseshoe shape, kind of like a half crescent moon shallow point. <laughs> uh, we should note the way that we have two holes. Two holes. What's the two hole strategy? Well, folks. Uh, oh dear, I got a loose minnow. Hold on. Easy. Hey, bud. Hey. Back in the in the camp. Uh. Yeah, I mean, you can just pop one and have the transducer down there, fine. Uh, but uh, I've had it happen where you get tangled with the transducer fighting a fish, and especially when we only have 12 inches of ice, just drill the extra hole. That's usually the first job of the first person on the scene is to pull the transducer. 
officer out of the auxiliary hole. Ooh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're in an extreme snow globe out here. See that? Yeah. Uh oh. I did just turn up the gain, but we got some. It could pick up rocks off the side. It shoots like a cone shape down. So even though the transducer's in this hole, and uh, we're over here, it can still pick us up being that far away, no problem. The deeper the better. Woo! Yeah. I'm assuming the uh, audio is going to come through just fine on this because I've got a foam dealy bob on the mic. Who knows if the GoPro is going to be worth it anything but we've got walls of blowing snow what's like what's happening why is it so windy how is it so windy and it's so cloudy usually uh, that's gonna blow through you can see the clouds are starting to kind of uh, differentiate and break up a little here yeah i don't know this is kind of the end of the system that's moving through we did have a little snow this morning down uh, closer to the shore and then yeah this like weird fog wind we were having earlier and then now i think it's all just kind of clearing through honestly i always say like i'm not crazy about getting up a fish at six in the morning but on today the way the weather planned out probably being here in the morning ahead of this front moving through would have been the play but whatever i got to go for a ski and sleep in and eat hash browns at the house i think that's a fair trade hash browns at the house house browns, house browns. All right, all right. Well, we're jigging. We're uh, jigging now. You got the thing down there, and uh, you're gonna slap the bag, and then the trout are gonna slap that chub. Woo! Oh my! Oh, slappers! <laughs> you're still on. Same story, you're just never ready for it. But, uh, you know, we didn't think this wind was gonna come in. Sure showed up, though. Right. Rolling. We're rolling on both fronts. Alright, so, uh, we thought we might fish till dark, um, but this wind uh, got here, so. We're uh, we're picking up. Uh, we got the jigging rod hole. Uh, we'll put away. Eric already heroically picked up the 33 foot pole or um, tip of number 10, and we have still tip of 11 uh, to pick up here. And then we're gonna get the heck out of this wind. I'm sure as soon as we get on the trail and out of this wind, we're gonna feel just fine. Feel nice and warm. Yeah, you know, it's it's not really ideal ice fishing conditions, uh, especially without a shanty. I think we're gonna go get a pint. But uh, first I'm gonna show you how to pick up the tip up. Keep your back to the wind. And this one is, this one's socked in. She's uh, really buried here. Uh, it doesn't even look like it's in a hole. Yeah, there's a hole there, trust me. We're in good water. Uh, so you just gotta sacrifice your hands for a little bit. Always point your mittens uh, downwind. This small, small little hole. So then, fast if you just like. Go quickly! As fast as fucking possible. We have to go! Leave that out where I put the minnow back in there. <laughs> the winds of winter. It's so my boy, uh, number 11. It's a real good tip up right here. It's all tip up 1 800 Frable. You make a good product. If you can still hear us. We did survive, 
But if you don't hear this, we died out on Daniels. Good night. Well, let's get on the trail and uh, then we can maybe have a sip of wine and collect our thoughts once we get out of this wind. Can you see the shaking in my GoPro hand? Oh, jeez, it's only like 25 degrees, but I'm freezing. Oh, yeah, that's a good thing it's 25. <laughs>